Hi everyone, my name is Tati and I'm going to be recording a short prenatal uh, yoga session for heart. So it shouldn't be too strenuous and even if you're not pregnant and are suffering from some heartburn issues, this will really help. And if you are pregnant, it's a safe way to practice, alleviate some symptoms and do something good for you and your baby. So let's get started. Every single prenatal yoga class that I teach starts with a little bit of centering. So come to any comfortable seat. You can also sit on something. I'm choosing my bolster, but if you want or have a pillow handy, a pillow also works. Notice your legs and whatever leg is in front, if you're choosing a crisscross or sukhasana, then just take the other leg in front. So switching it up for the body. You can hold baby, hold your thighs, one hand on your thigh, one hand on your belly, or one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly, or you can just have your hands in your lap. I'm gonna have my hands in my lap. Take a deep breath in through your nose, and exhale out of your mouth. If you feel so inclined to close your eyes, do, but if that doesn't work for you, you can focus on the tip of your nose or focus at a spot on the floor. Allow yourself to take a deep breath in again through your nose, opening up through your chest, your ribs, all the way to baby. And then softly release, no effort involved. Inhale deep into chest, ribs, belly, and release. One more time. Inhale deep, chest, ribs, belly, as big as you can. And this time slowly release out of your nose. If your eyes are closed, begin to open your eyes. And whether you're on the floor or on a pillow or a bolster like I am, we're gonna just start with a little bit of movement. So taking your hands on the floor again, or on the bolster, raise your right hand, and I'm gonna look opposite to you. So right hand and bend all the way over towards the left. Inhale, come up, bring your right hand down, and then and again, just moving. Inhale as you reach up, and exhale as you bend this time over towards the right. I'm just gonna slowly begin to move in this direction. You can breathe with your movements, or you can just move in whatever way feels good. I like to go slow to begin. You might like to go faster. Think about keeping both of your sit bones, both of your glutes on the floor or bolster as you're doing this. Because a lot of times, say if we're going off to the right, your left glute will lift. Try and keep them firmly rooted. So what you're mainly moving is the ribs, right? And of course, you're gonna move into the side of your body, but you're trying to open up into your ribs as much as you can. And if you can even imagine breathing into the intercostal muscles of your body, kind of like as if you had an accordion, and as you were breathing in, you were pulling that accordion big and long, and as you are breathing out or bending to one side, you're compressing and bringing the accordion in. Okay, you can do this about two more rounds, so two each side, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale, great. And then come back to center. Take your hands and bend your elbows, palms in towards one another, squeeze your shoulders, and then think about bringing your thumbs to the back of the room, opening up into your chest. You might want to look up, just try not to look all the way to the ceiling, look about 45 degrees with the place where your ceiling and the wall meet. Squeeze, so use the energy, use your muscles at the back of your body as you project your heart up, keep your tail rooted. And then inhale, take your hands forward, either apart shoulder width or palms together, and come all the way down towards the floor. It's okay if you round a little bit. Inhale as you come up. Exhale, bend your elbows, squeeze your shoulders, pull your arms back, stay here for a full inhale as you project your heart up, ribs up, and exhale as you squeeze and go a little bit deeper. Inhale, arms up, palms either together or shoulder width as you come all the way down. And we're gonna do that one more time. Inhale, lift your arms towards the ceiling. Gaze might go towards the ceiling as well. 
Exhale, bend your elbows, squeeze your shoulders, pull your thumbs back. Next inhale again is for length, projecting your heart, opening the front side of your body. We stay here and exhale to squeeze and engage the back as we open the front. Inhale, arms up, palms forward, together or separate, and reach forward. Tuck your chin as you do this as well. Great, guys. Continue with your breath, inhaling and exhaling, evenly and evenly and big and broad. As, or you can just breathe. The only wrong breath is no breath. Hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips as we come into a little bit of cat cow. So dropping your belly, taking your gaze forward, squeezing your shoulders and allowing your shoulder blades to come towards each other, but not so much that your shoulders right up towards your ears. So there is a difference between this if you're a visual learner, right? I'm just opening up, I'm blowing out into my elbows, I'm putting a lot of pressure into my lower back, and this where I'm pressing up through my hands, squeezing the shoulders together, reaching your heart forward, and then looking either forward or towards the place where the floor and the wall meet. Tail is pulling up, and if you think about your sitting bones, your sitting bones are going apart. So right sitting bone towards the right, and left sitting bone towards the left, begins to open up through the lower back and sitting bones. And just keep moving. Round, pressing into your hands, pulling your shoulder blades apart, tucking your chin and tucking your tail. And we begin to move with breath. Inhale, drop your belly, gaze forward, tail up. Exhale, press into your hands, hug in baby, round, tuck your chin. Your chin is the last thing to move. Continue from there. You can close your eyes, especially if you're getting a little bit of vertigo or nausea as you move. I'm just focusing on moving into your lower back, but more so than that, focusing on stretching and creating space in your ribs and upper back. You might have a lot of mobility here. Most of us don't in this direction. Most of us have most of the mobility in this front and back plane on your lower back, or in your lower back, rather. It doesn't have to look. Some people bend their elbows. Some people really exaggerate the movements. The only thing you don't want to do is throw your head back and look at the ceiling. Two more. Inhaling and exhaling. Come into neutral spine, so pressing into your hands, gripping with your fingertips, and then hug baby in. So your lower back is flat, and that again into um, putting the weight into your spine. And from here, in this flat back, take your right leg back behind you, toes on the floor, and move forward and back, forward and back. If your wrists are starting to hurt you at any point, or if you have carpal tunnel, pregnancy induced, or just regular, then you might want to place your elbows on a bolster or a pillow or a couple books, or if you have blocks. It makes it a little bit harder to keep your back flat, but that's okay. And then same thing, right leg, toes on the floor, forward and back, forward and back. Bring your knee back under your hip and do the same thing with the left side. So, toes on the floor, now you're stretching into your calf. This is really great when you're feeling really bloated or when you feel like your ankles and feet and legs are swollen. Or, alternatively, if you're getting pregnancy-induced varicose veins, which can even ride up all the way into your genitalia. So, if you're feeling all those varicose veins, or sometimes they can be responsible for hemorrhoids. So, this is actually a really good thing, not just for your calves, but for all of your body. I'm just take a couple more breaths. Remember, breathing is good. You breathe for yourself and you breathe for baby. One more. Great and then bring yourself back. You're gonna give your hands and shoulders um, and wrists a little bit of break. If you are able to sit on your heels, do, and if you're not, sit on something. So I'm always gonna show the modification, just because I don't know how your body is right now since I'm going in a video. So from here, again, I'm in the uh, modification. You're just gonna do a little bit of pregnancy safe twists. So pregnancy safe twists are not as deep as regular twists because of baby. Okay, so right hand is gonna come to the inside of your uh, right thigh if it's accessible to you or to the inside of your left or top of your left thigh if it is accessible to you. If, again, this takes a little bit of longer arm 
arms or more mobility in the upper chest, which I'm not pregnant and I can't even really do without twisting into my belly. So I'm gonna take my hand to the inside of my left leg. And then right hand is gonna go on right hip. Keep baby pointing forward, your belly button pointing forward, and think about only moving from the rib cage. So if you don't know where your rib cage is, you can just feel the hard parts. And when you get to the soft part, it's kind of where your rib cage ends. So you only want to be moving from there. So left hand on hip, think about growing really tall. And so this is where we have our stomach on the left side, just underneath our rib cage. So think about breathing into that area, creating space, getting really long, only moving from the rib cage, and then think from the bottom of your right rib cage to the top of your left shoulder, like as if you were wearing a Miss America patch, sash, sash you're going to be opening there. It takes control to not move into baby. So if you notice that you're twisting but you're moving into baby or your right knee is lifting, try to make the movement smaller and safer. You might even engage your left shoulder blade to help you twist and release. Same thing, second side, so right hand on right hip. Take your left hand to wherever you need it to. Think about growing really tall. And then slowly move your body and your gaze. I'm not gonna do that because I wanna be able to look into the camera, but you're gonna just open up. You might feel a twist in your left lower back. You might feel an opening of your chest. Again, think length the whole time. And then use your left hand to help support you so it's not your core supporting your lift, but your hand. And then once you have that initial lift from your hand, then you can engage your core if your belly is moving. And the whole time you're just breathing, opening, getting really tall, and again, from left rib cage to right shoulder, just opening up, engaging maybe your right shoulder blade and the muscles around there. Good. Inhale, bring both arms up. Open up into the back of your body, and then same as before, hands together or shoulder width, reach forward. It's almost like you're doing a seated cat cow, and in fact, I'll do it to the side so you can see how my spine begins to move, right? Arms above and overhead, maybe you even begin to bend those elbows like before. It is okay to move into a little bit of a back bend here. We're doing a seated cat cow-ish. And then forward as you round to the degree that baby will let you. So I like to actually bring my hands down towards the floor because I feel like it gives me a really good stretch in the shoulders, but you might just need hands um, and arms parallel to the floor. And one more time, inhale, lift up. Maybe bend your elbows, looking to the place where the ceiling and the wall meet, and then exhale, coming forward. Good, and again, I'm just gonna take this variation because it feels really good in my body. Good, release. Take whatever you're sitting on out from underneath you. Do a couple more cat cows here. So cat cows are actually really great to reset baby's position. When in doubt, cat cow it out. Great. And then from here, we're gonna come into a little bit of a, a mermaid flow. Okay, so sitting down, taking a bolster, a pillow, a couch cushion, whatever you need, a bunch of bundled up blankets, whatever is good for you, laying on your left hip, using, allowing the bolster or pillow to actually make connection with your left hip. And then from here, knees are together, ankles are together to begin, and you pick up your right shin, so my hand is wrapping around my shin, and pull that leg back. So you're kind of in a little bit of a staggered stance. Your left foot is on top or touching your right thigh. It can go a little bit higher. I don't find that comfortable for my knee, so I'm just gonna go nice and wide. Your right glute is now off of the floor. Use your left hand in front of your bolster or pillows or on your bolster or pillows. Again, I just like that extra support. Right hand on the hip. Lift your right glute up and pull your hip forward and then sit your right glute down. Lift it up. At the top, give your right glute a squeeze and then come down. Lift it up, squeeze your glute, and then bring it down. And just keep going like this. Maybe you go fast or slow. It's really up to you and your pace. Do that one more time, and at the top, squeeze your glute a lot. For five, squeeze four, squeeze even harder, three, squeeze the most, two, and one, and release. So maybe your right glute descends a little bit more towards the floor, and perhaps it touches or not. From here, allow your left arm to come down to the bolster or blocks. 
And from here, you can choose to support your head or bring your hand on your, uh, your head and ear on your bicep. I'm going to support. So if you need to adjust, if you need to move baby out of the way, if you're really full term close to being uh, close to delivering, you might actually find a little bit more comfort with the belly hanging or the side of your body hanging off of the bolster, up to you. And then right arm is gonna come up and overhead and back stroke big. So we're not throwing the arm back, you are moving your arm like as if you were in quicksand or honey or it's almost like your arm could actually cut the air. Try and keep this movement just in your arm because it is tempting to move into your spine, like kind of belly dancer-ish, but hug baby in, straighten your spine, press your elbow or arm into the uh, bolster, and then all of your ribs press them into your bolster or blanket. I'm just gonna do this about two more times. Great. And the next time your arm is above and overhead, lay your arm down. Again, you don't have to. It is a good workout for your neck. And you're going to stretch into the side of your body. As you're here, you're still kind of pressing your left ribs into the floor. It is fine if you're angling a little forward. It is fine if you're angling a little back. Personally, I like to angle with my nose pointing straight ahead towards the back of the room. Hug baby in so you feel baby kind of lift up off the floor and off of your pubic area. And then you're using your breath intentionally, again, to this place. This is liver side, and it'll make sense when you're on a stomach side. So open up into every rib, use your arm, engage core, hug baby in, relax your jaw. Maybe even lengthen through your knee. Again, if you need to, you can straighten your leg, but just make sure that you're supporting the side of your knee. One more breath. Great. Right arm releases, comes in front of you. Press your hand into the floor, lift up a little, take your left hand to the other side, and then from here, come all the way back up. So from here, we're actually gonna come into a little bit of a quad stretch. So you're just gonna move your legs slightly so that your shin is more parallel with the back or front of the room. From here, bring your right foot. So your right foot may have been off to the side, toes may have been out or down. This time, bring your foot closer towards your glute, lean slightly back, Lift up your butt, and if you had a tail, think about tucking it under, and you're just going to go back to as much as you can. You might want to go onto forearms, you might want to support yourself with a block or the side of your couch or your bed or whatever. And if you want a little bit more, squeeze your right glute. So really activate into that glute. Take a deep breath in and out. I specifically like this posture because it allows you to stretch your quad without putting too much of an emphasis on a back bend. Because a lot of quad stretches are back bends. And when you're especially heavily pregnant, uh, really far along, this doesn't always feel good for your lower back. So this is a great option. You're going to release, so roll onto your left side, kick out through your right leg, bring both legs forward, and then we're going to come into a very short pigeon pose on the left side. So taking your, uh, coming from hands and knees, that's probably the easiest and safest way, take your left knee towards your left wrist and your right foot towards your right wrist. Drag your back leg and either stay here, or again, this is where the further along you get, there's less space for baby to, um, baby doesn't allow you as much space to go down. So you can either bring your forearms on the floor or bolster, take your head in your hands, or for some people that are very pregnant, right? Maybe end of the third trimester, sometimes it feels really good to take your leg in front of the bolster and support your back leg with the bolster, again, or pillows. And this way, it allows for just a little bit more freedom. Alternatively, you can also have another bolster underneath your knees. I'm just gonna breathe here, letting baby relax. If this doesn't feel good on your back, keep baby hugged in and point your tail towards your back toes. So not down, it's not a tuck, right? Your back is still straight. It's just pointing your tail towards your toes. Great, and then we're gonna release. 
So come out of the posture. Try not to do downward facing dog if you're on your third trimester, because, unless you're breached, because sometimes baby can come out of position and flip, right? And if you're already in a good position, you don't wanna do that. So you're gonna do this all on the second side. Bolster is gonna touch your right hip, stack your legs, lean into your right, bring your left foot towards your right, or your left knee towards your right foot. Again, your foot does not have to be close to your body, it can be off to the side. And then from here, we're just gonna back stroke, right? Remember, you want that control because right now your joints are a little bit more lax than normal. And depending on how far along you are in the pregnancy or how hypermobile you are or how much yoga you do, that may be very, very lax. We wanna keep our joints safe. Great. One more. And the next time your arm is above and overhead and you can stay here or you can pull your arm, thinking about stretching to the side. Choose the position of your chest, and this one's the one that's going to really help with your heartburn. So imagine you could see your stomach, or you could feel it tucked. You wanna think about breathing into your stomach. You wanna think about creating as much space on the ribs as you can. And again, press, especially if your back feels unsteady or if baby's weight feels uncomfortable, you can, again, always move the bolster. But think about pressing your right rib cage into the floor or, or rather the pillow or the bolster. Opening up into the side of the waist. Protect your neck here as well. So sometimes it doesn't feel good to look up or it doesn't feel good to lay down, look down. Right now I'm using my arm to create just a little bit more space. And yes, you're probably gonna bring your uh, shoulders towards your ears. If it doesn't hurt your neck, that's fine. Last breath. And you safely come out. So left hand in front of your face, lean slightly forward, right hand behind you or to the outside of your bolster or pillow. Bring that bolster or pillow back behind you. Again, you don't have to. Bring your foot a little bit closer towards your glutes and then lean back. Remember to take your butt, tuck it under. You'll get a deeper stretch. It will almost come a little bit towards the inner thigh, depending on where you're tight. If you need more, we squeeze the glute for three, two, one, four, five. Weird counting, but I needed five. Oh, and I almost forgot. So you're gonna come out, right? lean to the right, bring your right hand down, you can use your bolster again, left hand on the hip, and lift up your hip and squeeze your glute. And keep going like that, lifting up and squeezing, coming down. So in this position, I myself notice a little bit of a glute weakness. Right? My left glute doesn't feel as strong as my right. So I might choose to hold and squeeze a little bit more, or maybe do some glute work after this. We're already kind of over on time, so lifting up and squeezing, lifting up and squeezing. Good, one more time. Great, and then we come into our pigeon pose. So right knee towards right wrist, right foot towards left wrist, untuck your toes, and come onto your bolster or pillow. Again, you can take your bolster or pillow anywhere, and depending on how pregnant you are, your baby might not like this pose. Just make sure to bolster yourself up so you have a little bit more space. Normally, I don't really gripe too much about whether your hips are even or not, but in pregnancy, since your sacroiliac joints are moving because a baby's about to pass through your pelvis, I like to keep them level so that you're not putting too much pressure on one SI joint versus the other. What that means is don't let your hips dip in one direction more than the other, even if that means you have to put something under your hips. Take one more breath and release. Come out of the posture, take a cat cow, inhale and exhale. Come into a seated position and then take your Shavasana. Thank you guys for joining me in this very short and hopefully effective prenatal yoga session for some heartburn. I hope it brings you some relief. Namaste.